Washington is broken. Everyday people are graduating from universities with crippling debt, stifling their opportunity for financial mobility. That is what's broken with this country. That was Miramar Mayor Wayne Messam announcing his run for president this week. He enters a crowded Democratic field and he joins us here in the studio. Mr. Mayor, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. So why run for president? Well, you know, um, being the son of immigrants, uh, my parents came from Jamaica. My father was a contract sugarcane cutter. I'm in uh, the Western Palm Beach County. I'm doing very hard work and cutting sugarcane. And my mother was a cook and, and, and eventually became a uh, domestic worker. They came to this country to chase the American dream, uh, which I'm living. I had the opportunity to go to Florida State University, be a national champion, playing for Coach Bobby Bowden. Um, after um, Florida State, I um, had a brief stint with the um, NFL. When my NFL career was cut short, my wife and I started a business. And now I'm the mayor of one of the um, uh, cities that has the most fastest growing economies in the country. Um, and um, I'm just um, looking to uh, ensure that Americans can reclaim back that American dream that I think is slipping away from average everyday Americans. Um, there, we have a lot of pressing issues in this country um, that Washington is not meeting. So let's, let's get to some of them, but yes. I want to just start with uh, an obvious question. What do you feel was lacking in the field? Because there's no shortage of Democrats running. Yes. You have, there's maybe as many as 20 Democrats that are going to enter the field, including some are mayors, some are you know senators. We've got a whole array of people. What was lacking in this field that felt that you felt you needed to get into it? Well, the thing is, is that uh, many Americans feel that Washington is dysfunctional and broken and that they aren't seeing the solutions that impact their everyday lives. When you think about and contemplate the fact that um, that we have gun violence that is ravaging in terms of mass shootings and gun and in our streets, um, access to health care, uh, high cost prescriptions, um, they're seeing that Washington is not solving their issues. When you look at crippling student loan debt, um, that's out there, the high cost of college, to feel that you know there aren't enough solutions um, and they're not able to achieve the American dream. Um, so when you think about myself as a candidate, I present my I present a unique um, option for the American people being How mayor so? because mayors are uh, generally perceived as individuals who get the job done. Uh, we don't have the luxury to shut down our government. Uh, we're closest to the people, and I'm not convinced that um, individuals necessarily from Washington. Um, being so far removed um, from the residents seems to be out of touch on many accounts. Um, so being a mayor that's dealing with a lot of progressive issues in our city um, that has um, been able to, you know, um, be competitive on an international front and competing head to head with China and bringing jobs to our city, um, ushering our city through uh, Hurricane Irma, uh, we passed the living wage um, in our city. Um, I sued the state of Florida so that local municipalities can have a, a better and a greater say or just to have a say in terms of gun safety in our in our communities. We can't do that right now. I'm currently fighting right now oil drilling right outside of the borders of our city that's threatening the Everglades as well as our precious drinking water right now. And these are important issues um, that are transferable from a national standpoint. So I look forward to um, getting out and meeting the American people and making my case on um, how and why and being an option to be the president of the United All States. Right, let's talk about one of those issues that I know you're going you know, you've announced this weekend we're taping this on Friday I know you've got an announcement on Saturday this way or on Sunday but you've already started talking about it a little bit you have a college debt forgiveness program where you want to basically take the burden of college debt that has already been accumulated by so many young people and wipe it clean it would basically cost 1.5 trillion dollars so let me ask a two-part question why is this a priority for you? And how are you going to pay for a $1.5 trillion program? Yeah, what I would also add to your opening statement regarding student loan debt is that it's not just young people. It's grandmothers, it's mothers, fathers, grandfathers that also take out parent loans to pay for their children's education. And as you stated before, it's approximately $1.5 trillion. What that does is it's stifling the economy and it's actually hampering individuals' ability for financial um, upward mobility. Um, when you think about it, 
contemplate over four to five to even sometimes six hundred dollars a month to pay for tens of thousands of dollars in debt um, or sometimes even over a hundred thousand dollars of debt outstanding student loan debt is the second largest consumer debt after housing um, in this country so we want to wipe that clean obviously we have to deal with a system that has um, high costs um, 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 education costs um, we have to address that as well but before we address that we have to take care of the debt that's outstanding so how, how that would it? be paid for is we would repeal the Trump tax cut that um, is approximately uh, two trillion dollars um, to corporations and, the, uh, and to the richest um, of America Americans, so that would be ample enough money to pay for um, the eradication of this debt um, with uh, additional resources left over to um, to uh, appropriately perhaps um, go to corporations as well as our perhaps to address with other issues in the country. So there are a number of issues that Democrats want to find money for by increasing taxes on, on the wealthy. Some you're, you're focused on on college debt, others are focused on health care. There are a number of things. Why should college debt be more important than, say, tackling using the, those dollars if you want to repeal that tax cut? to provide health care for millions of Americans. Well, I obviously um, agree as well and have a priority um, for health care, but it's a matter, it's a matter of, of, of priorities and having the will to be able to solve these issues. Um, it's not a situation where it's either or, or we are pitting needs of the American people. At the end of the day, it's about making America competitive. When we have an economy and a system that is set forth that you have to, in many cases, have to have a higher um, degree or a higher education to be um, to achieve a high paying job and for corporations to have ample um, supply of human resources to be competitive globally, what type of system do we want to have where we tell American people that you should have a higher education, get a degree to get a great job, but yet, but once you graduate, you have to basically mortgage the rest of your professional working life paying off this education. I think America becomes more competitive. It will have um, economic benefits in terms of um, contributing to our production, our productivity as a, as, a, as a country. We can use that disposable money instead of paying loans to invest, to save, to, um, to, 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 to do all the things that you want to do in terms of living your life uh, but instead of being sacked with high paying um, premium payments for, 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 for interest loan debts. How are you going to finance your campaign? How are you going to raise the money? You're clearly one of the lesser known candidates. Yes. I think that's fair to say. I don't think that's, that's an unfair statement. How are you going to raise the money necessary to run a credible presidential campaign across the country? Well, when you're talking about issues like addressing high student loan debts, uh, talking about the environment, wanting to ensure that our cities and communities are straight, are safe, these are issues that are important to the American people. People, Amer average American people, working class, middle class people resonates with these issues. Just from launching yesterday, um, our campaign has gotten tremendous amount of engagement. And we believe that our small dollar donors across this country are going to fuel this campaign because we are talking about issues that they care about. And that's the type of campaign that I will be taking to America. And when Americans feel that they have a champion fighting for their issues and fighting for the things that they care about, they support those candidates. So we only have about 30 seconds. Beto O'Rourke raised in the first 24 hours after he made his announcement 6.1 million. Bernie Sanders raised about 5.9 million. What did you raise in the first 24 hours? Well, I have not announced yet. That happens on Saturday. And they're running their race. I'm going to run my race. And I'm not trying to replicate anyone else's production. They'll take care of their own and I'll take care of mine. And as long as I'm resonating with the American people, I feel confident that I'll have the resources to have a campaign that the people will, can believe in because they know that they have a champion fighting for their issues that they care about. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for coming in. I'm sure we'll talk more. Thank you. All right. Take care. Great. All right. We'll be right back after the break.